Oh goodness, I just learned about a video that was posted to YouTube, which apparently received a billion views in two minutes, called Dear Fat People. And in this video, a comedian makes the case that because she so deeply wants to help overweight and obese people that she's going to shame them and encourage other people to shame fat people because that's the most effective way to get them to starve themselves harder so that they can lose weight. All right, well, sweet, awesome individual who thinks that bullying and shaming people who are suffering and have been suffering every day of their life is an appropriate thing to do, you claim in your video that you are dropping truth bombs and that you hope these truth bombs will help people. So if you don't mind, I would love to drop some truth bombs that I think might help you in your effort to help people because I honestly do not think that bullying and shaming people will ever yield the results that you're after or you claim to be after, which is helping overweight and obese people live better. So first of all, in your video, you actually start your video and I applaud you for this by saying, hey, it's never right to shame someone or to bully someone based on something that they can't control. Say something that is tied to genetics, for example, race. Well, just so you have the facts, I know you love truth bombs, so here's a truth bomb for you. About 65% of your weight is highly tied to your genetics. So right out of the gate, right out of the gate, 65% of everything you're saying, we, we, gotta, we gotta tone that down, we gotta tone that down because weight is really, really tightly tied to genetics, about 65%. Okay, second thing is, I think the reason you might feel that shaming someone is useful is because maybe they're unaware of, of how much they're suffering. And if you could just make them feel worse, then maybe, you know, channeling Tony Robbins here, everyone pursues pleasure and moves away from pain. You're like, oh, if I can make these people feel enough pain, then maybe they'll change their life. And then of course you say that the change they should make is to starve themselves and we'll get into that later. But first of all, just so you, I know you love truth bombs, Overweight people uh, are suffering a lot already, right? A lot. So here's a truth bomb for you. There was a study done at the University of Florida. And I, I know I know you care about obese people because that's why you recorded this video because you want to help them. So here's, here's just so you understand how much they're suffering and how much they need your help. So there was a study done at the University of Florida. And in this study, the researchers looked at individuals who were overweight or obese and then had surgery done and we don't have time to talk about that, had surgery done to lose that weight. So then they lost the weight. And they came back and asked these people, now that they've lived life as both overweight and obese and as non-overweight and obese, if they had to either have a leg amputated or go blind or gain the weight back, which would they choose? So here are their choices. We're either gonna cut your leg off, we're either gonna take away your sight or we're gonna make you overweight or obese again. Almost unanimously, the participants in the University of Florida study said they would rather have their leg cut off or their vision taken away than to be overweight again. So, I know you wanna help people, but making people that are hurting that deeply feel worse, like the issue isn't that they're not in enough pain. Let me further show you or help you understand how deeply this hurt sets in. So there was a study done in the American Journal of Public Health and overweight individuals were surveyed and eight out of 10 of them said that they avoid going out in public because of the shame and the teasing and the bullying that they face. And that eight out of 10 of them face daily bouts of depression because of their weight. And that most shockingly, eight out of 10 of them have received improper medical care because either their physicians or their nurses or any healthcare provider just didn't want to interact with them or didn't want to touch them. And I, I think you can imagine how much that would hurt. So the question is not, how can we make these people who are suffering so deeply suffer more? 
Uh, and then how do we, after making them suffer more, tell them to eat less, which just one more truth bomb for you, the eat less, exercise more approach. We've got data on that. We have actual studies and science on that, which shows us that that approach has a documented failure rate of 95.4%. That means for more than 19 out of 20 people, even if you shame them till the cows come home, even if you make them feel even worse than they already do, more than 19 out of 20 of them will not achieve success by eating less and exercising more. Fact. Fact. So not only should we maybe not be shaming and bullying people, but then after we stop shaming and bullying people, maybe we should tell them to do something other than that which has proven to fail more than 95% of the time. And last truth bomb I wanna, wanna drop on you here, because I know, I know you wanna help people, right? That's what you're saying in your video, you wanna help people. And I, I actually, there's a line in your video where you say, I want I, something like, I want you to be around for your kids, I don't want you to leave, we need you here. And man, that's, I mean, that's awesome. It, I mean, in your heart of hearts, there's something golden there because that's cool. Like you, you wouldn't just say that if you didn't mean it. And that's awesome. So help so that I can help you. Let's think about overweight kids. Cause I, I think sometimes it might be a little bit easier to poke fun at, at overweight adults for whatever reason, it's still not appropriate. It's still never good to bully anyone, but let's look at maybe the 40 million children under the age of five who are overweight or obese. Like, would you, do you want them like do you do you want a three-year-old to watch your video do, do you think that that individual just needs to watch your video and get shamed a little bit harder or the just one third of, of children in general who are overweight do you actually think that them getting bullied more in school would help them and then that they just need to eat less and exercise more i mean really think about that for a second like if you go into a school cafeteria one third of the children are going to be overweight. Do you think that those one third of children are eating, like they have three lunches in front of them and they're eating soda and chips and pop and the other two thirds of kids are drinking seltzer water, seltzer water and eating kale on a treadmill? Of course, of course not, right? So how do we explain this? What do we do? We can't, we can't starve our children. We can't starve five-year-olds. What we need to do is we need to understand what's really going on here. And we really need to understand that in every culture all around the world, obesity happens when we stop eating food and we start eating processed edible products. It's not about them burning more calories or eating fewer calories, right? If calories were the issue, just here's, here's one more truth bomb. Got lots of truth bombs today. If someone has 100 excess pounds of fat on their body, maybe the individual you talked about meeting at the airport, someone who's extremely overweight, 100 additional pounds of fat on their body, and if a pound of fat contains 3,500 calories, then this person, the person you met at the airport, has 350,000 calories already in their body. However, their brain tells them to eat. Their brain says, you are hungry. What's going on there? Right? Why does their brain, they have 350,000 calories already sitting inside them. But their brain is telling them they're hungry. What's going on there? And, and honestly, what's going on with the fact that if you look, this country have a horrible obesity epidemic. So many people are suffering so deeply. The real question we have to ask is not like, oh my gosh, how do we have 70% of the population overweight when you actually look at how we're told to eat? When you look at how 99% of the population eats, you mentioned in your video, oh, make better choices and don't order hamburgers and french fries at McDonald's. It's not just overweight and obese people that eat hamburgers and french fries. In fact, we all know, every single person who's watching this video knows someone who eats whatever they want, whenever they want, and don't get fat. Whereas some other people, they diet all the time, they exercise all the time, and they still can't lose weight. How do we explain that? How do we explain that, right? This is a deeper problem and it's a deeper medical problem. It's a problem that has to involve with dysregulation of hormones and our digestive system and our brain. And it's a problem that we need to come at scientifically and compassionately because it's affecting our children. It's affecting our economy. The burden of just type two diabetes on this country is $50 billion greater than the burden of smoking. And now I know you wanna help solve that problem, 
But if we know that telling people to starve themselves fails 95.4% of the time, then one, bullying is never a good idea. Two, telling them to do something that we know doesn't work also isn't a good idea. So I love your energy, I love your passion, and I love your commitment to helping people to not die and to leave their families before their time, because no one should have to experience that. But please let me help you understand the correct science of eating and exercise so that you can really, really help people. And I look forward to that opportunity. Remember, stay sane.